Hey, good Tuesday, everybody. Welcome back. Hopefully we're having a wonderful uh, day so far. And unfortunately, again, probably one of the busier weeks here for 2024 in the weather department with what is still technically potential tropical cyclone nine very soon to become, if not already, by the time you're watching this, uh, tropical storm Helene, and then eventually Hurricane Helene, and also a pretty good shot we get major Hurricane Helene out of this as uh, we get landfall into Florida come Thursday. So a very kind of uh, packed week, and this is not the only thing I'm watching. We also have severe weather today across portions of uh, kind of the Ohio and Tennessee River Valleys through the Appalachia chain, uh, and that could bring even a couple tornadoes and unfortunately really saturate the soils ahead of some communities uh, into the Carolinas and Georgia that are going to get a lot of wind and rain from this storm. Uh, so again, this is not just a coastal storm. This is going to bring impacts well inland into Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, and potentially even Tennessee and Alabama uh, as we go ahead through the week. So again, a lot to discuss in today's video. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. We are knocking on the doorstep of 10,000, which is a huge milestone uh, that uh, really wouldn't be possible without all of you folks coming back every day and uh, watching these videos. So again, really appreciate all the growth and uh, y'all really do mean the world to me. Uh, pretty uh, awesome to be able to still be in college and technically be living my dream uh, by doing this for all of you. Um, also like the video while you're down there and please consider sharing it with somebody that lives here into the Gulf Coast, specifically the Big Bend of Florida through the West Coast of Florida. Uh, again, this could be a storm that we do unfortunately see catastrophic levels of storm surge from. Uh, and then, you know, again, those inland impacts as well. So consider sharing it, like it, and comment, let me know uh, where you're watching from. Also, I know I keep talking here, but I'll add this. I'm going to try my best to go live tonight uh, probably around 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern time in that block. Uh, again, you can hit that bell next to the subscribe button. And that will notify you about uh, 30 minutes before the live when it's going to start. Uh, and I'll be taking all of your questions during that live stream. Uh, so, you know, definitely something to look forward to tonight. All right, let's dive into things because, again, a lot to discuss here. And I know we all have a busy week ahead. Uh, so going ahead and looking at, again, PTC9 still, and before I continue saying PTC9, let me refresh the page and double check that we are still working with PTC9, uh, and we didn't get changed to Tropical Storm Helene as of 8, and it doesn't look like it. It looks like we're still at potential Tropical Cyclone 9, so all right, awesome. That works out well. Um, so uh, again, taking a look at the satellite loop from it, though, we do have a lot of convection firing up here near the storm, but not technically over the center of the storm. The center of the storm uh, is still kind of in this general ballpark, displaced a little bit from the convection. Uh, and one of the reasons that we're seeing this kind of shear that is taking over the storm a little bit is we actually have a hurricane in the Pacific that is bringing a lot of outflow uh, that is kind of blowing some of this convection to the right-hand side of the storm. And that wasn't necessarily unexpected. Uh, maybe it's a little bit stronger than some of the models had anticipated, but I really don't think that this is going to uh, prevent Helene from uh, becoming a hurricane or even a major hurricane during its life cycle. Unfortunately, still has way too many factors going for it. So uh, again, still organizing this morning. I think by the time we have a live stream tonight, this is going to be a very different looking picture. I do expect at least a tropical storm by them uh, and probably one that is getting much better organized uh, as well when we go to the evening hours of tonight. All right, so the latest here from the uh, kind of cone here from the National Hurricane Center, uh, we are still expecting a major hurricane to make landfall into the state of Florida, uh, and unfortunately, again, working inland. So kind of the key to this storm, I think, in forecasting it is really going to come between now and Wednesday afternoon. So all day today and then the first half of tomorrow, how well does the storm organize while it's in the Caribbean before eventually crossing the Yucatan Channel here and getting into the Gulf of Mexico? That will tell us a lot about how strong the storm is eventually going to get on down the road uh, whenever it makes its approach again to the big bend of Florida. So latest landfall thinking, again, basically the cone goes right over Perry, Florida, which I know it feels like deja vu. We've had so many hurricanes and tropical storms come right through this area, uh, but unfortunately it looks like another one. So you folks into Cedar Key, that kind of area of Florida, even into the Tampa Bay area, St. Petersburg, Clearwater, Holiday, Florida, um, and all the way up towards Spring Hill, Florida, Sugar Mill Woods, uh, and uh, the Crystal River area, definitely going to be looking at the potential of big time storm surge from this system. Uh, in fact, we could see catastrophic levels of storm surge, unfortunately, here, really, especially into this Cedar Key region uh, of the coastline, I think is going to have probably the worst of it. We'll take a look at that storm surge map. Uh, again, though, that's not the end of it. The storm likely to continue to pull northward through either the state of Georgia or South Carolina, I think. Um, well, definitely through Georgia, no matter what, but then eventually, 
could get into South Carolina. And look at this. By the time this storm is all the way up near uh, kind of Cordell, Georgia, and you know, getting up near Warner Robins, we're still de uh, dealing with a 70 mile an hour tropical storm. That's a borderline hurricane well inland into Georgia. We're going to see big time power outage concern excuse me, uh, power outage concerns uh, well past the Big Bend, again, up into southern Georgia and then even north Georgia into the upstate of South Carolina. I'm worried about uh, power outages uh, where we can see winds gusting up near 60, 65 miles an hour through the Atlanta or Greenville Spartanburg metros, uh, depending on exactly what track it takes. And remember, the worst of it's going to be on the right hand side of the system. So if the center of the circulation is, we'll say, right here over Athens, uh, the worst of it's going to be right here into western North Carolina and upstate South Carolina from Augusta up through Greenville, Spartanburg, Anderson, uh, and kind of the surrounding communities there uh, into the western half of the state. So uh, I am concerned about uh, impacts even potentially into the Charlotte metro. We could see some big time wind gusts out of this uh, and some heavy rain. And then luckily, I think by the time the storm gets into Tennessee, it's going to get shredded apart pretty quickly by some uh, upper level dynamics in the atmosphere. So we do have that going for us. But before it gets there, again, I'm expecting big time inland impacts here. All right, we're close enough now. We officially do have hurricane watches up and uh, kind of tropical storm watches as well for much of the state of Florida. These kind of bright pink colors you see here through the Tallahassee area, uh, back through the Big Bend. Again, those are hurricane watches. The more salmon color uh, you see, those are tropical storm watches. Again, expecting those conditions uh, potentially as early as Thursday morning to begin, maybe even Wednesday night here down through the Keys uh, and through portions of Southwest Florida. But these tropical storm watches, again, the Keys, Cape Coral, Fort Myers, Port Charlotte, uh, and then we transitioned to hurricane watches through the Tampa Bay area there through portions of Pinellas County, uh, up again through the Big Bend of Florida, and well inland, even the uh, capital there of Tallahassee under a hurricane watch, and very close to Gainesville as well being under a hurricane watch. Uh, and then flooding watches already in effect here through Valdosta. Uh, southern Georgia and even the Dothan area of Alabama. So uh, we're, we're getting close, folks. Again, this is one that uh, I don't want to definitely didn't sneak up on us by any means. I mean, I've been talking about this for almost a week plus now, um, but uh, it feels like it has gotten here quickly for sure. All right, let's go and dive into some model, gu uh, model guidance, excuse me, uh, and uh, hopefully we can keep this video under three hours long. <laughs> uh, so again, like I mentioned, the key to this storm is really going to be what happens today and tomorrow as this crosses into the Gulf of Mexico. The stronger it gets now, the stronger it will be on approach to Florida, which I know kind of sounds like uh, well, obviously, but it really is true because right now the storm is probably going to be in its cleanest environment now through Wednesday. Uh, and then Thursday, the conditions are going to become a little less favorable for strengthening. So if the storm is a little bit weaker as it enters that rougher uh, atmospheric conditions, it's very likely to not be as strong as some of the models suggest. However, uh, if it's uh, if it comes out of the Caribbean as a hurricane, you know, or maybe even a strong hurricane, then unfortunately, uh, it's kind of, it's, you know, worst case scenario potentially for Florida. All right, so let's take a look at some models here. Again, what happens now is key. So the GFS really has been the one to kind of blow this up in the Caribbean. And by the time we get to Wednesday morning and afternoon, as this is crossing the Yucatan Channel, we have a well-defined center of circulation uh, that eventually pulls up into the Gulf of Mexico uh, and then really hits the overdrive or really hits that uh, booster, if you will, as it moves over this warm eddy of the Gulf of Mexico and becomes a very powerful hurricane uh, by Thursday morning. The European has been a little less excited about this idea of super quick development, and you'll see that here. Uh, by the time we get to Wednesday, as this is crossing into the Gulf, definitely, you know, it's a tropical storm at least, but if we compare it to the GFS here, look at how different the vorticity maps are. The GFS is much more tightly clustered here uh, and uh, a much stronger vort max there in the center uh, due to that curvature vorticity, but the European a little weaker. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Again, I'm still of the thought that we're going to be closer to the GFS side of things uh, and um, a little less close to the European. And it's kind of been that way for much of uh, the year so far. I think the GFS has probably outperformed the Euro slightly here in the tropics. All right, uh, let's take a look at what this could look like on radar, on approach, and don't worry, I'm going to go more in depth into the impacts here later on in this segment of the video, um, but for right now, again, I just want to kind of go over a quick overview of what we're expecting. So here we go. Thursday morning, a powerful hurricane, likely approaching major hurricane status just off the coast of Florida here, probably about one or 200 miles uh, south southwest of the Fort Myers area and continuing to turn northward. And at this point, it's going to slowly bend back in. And you'll notice uh, we kind of went from uh, right here up to this portion of the map. Uh, so you're noticing that turn already beginning 
Uh, and we're seeing millibars down near 960 millibars. So that would probably be a category three storm uh, if I had to put a number on it. And then here comes landfall uh, during uh, the evening hours of Thursday. This is about 8 p.m. Thursday evening, a powerful hurricane right into the Big Bend of Florida. Uh, and now this is where things get interesting for our folks inland. One, you'll already notice ahead of this thing, look at all this rain falling up into upstate South Carolina uh, while the storm's still down in Florida. This is a big time storm system. So all that precipitation is going to really spread out ahead of it on top of the fact we already have a frontal boundary kind of sagging around this part of the country bringing rain today and tomorrow before we even get into Thursday so again I'm concerned about flooding here especially for you folks in kind of Oconee Pickens County Transylvania County where we have this upslope flow uh, into northeastern Georgia as well there uh, kind of uh, into the Tacoa area uh, again, very concerned about uh, potential flash flooding, creek flooding, river flooding. Uh, and then unfortunately, that's going to loosen up the soils. And then we're going to get the wind on top of that. Uh, and then I'm concerned about power outages going into the overnight Thursday into the first half of Friday before the storm gets on out of here. So uh, again, uh, just remember, impacts are going to go well inland with this system. Now, for you folks here right along the immediate coastline into the Big Bend of Florida, unfortunately, you're going to get the worst of it, and the storm surge here is really going to be quite strong. We're going to take a look at storm surge totals, but uh, I am expecting the potential for catastrophic surge uh, in certain communities, and you know, more than enough surge to cause big time problems from Tampa Bay all the way back down towards Fort Myers. Uh, again, going to see some flooding uh, here from the ocean, not just from freshwater flooding. All right, so there's landfall. And then look at this. This is only a six hour difference. We'll call this 8 p.m. We'll call this 2 a.m., give or take a couple hours. This moves from Perry, Florida, all the way up to Macon, Georgia, uh, in a six hour stretch. I mean, uh, yeah, you could drive it in six hours, sure. But uh, for a tropical system, this is absolutely booking it. Six hours later, this thing's over upstate South Carolina. So this storm's only going to have about 12 hours to weaken from landfall in Florida uh, to being over either Atlanta or the Greenville-Spartanburg metro, again, depending on exact track here. And that's the reason we're concerned about big time impacts inland. And I don't want to compare this to Hugo by any means. Uh, but it's similar in the sense that Hugo absolutely hit the boosters once it got uh, to Charleston and just ran right up the I-26 and I-77 corridor and was in Charlotte, you know, six or 12 hours later. And that's why Charlotte has its all-time wind record uh, because of that sort of setup. So this could be similar where we see hurricane force winds well inland and then tropical storm force winds even further inland than that uh, before eventually... Uh, the storm really gets shredded, to be completely honest, once it hits the mountain chain by frictional forces uh, and by a big old ridge that kind of just uh, ends any chance of the storm surviving past that point. So uh, again, from Florida, Georgia, up through the Carolinas, big time impacts. Luckily, after that, I think the impacts become uh, much more minimal uh, as we get some dynamical kind of features to help us out. All right, European, I'll show it to you. Again, it's basically the same story, just a higher millibar value. But again, I really would be surprised if this is anywhere near 984 millibars as the European shows. I think the GFS is probably right about there. I'd say between 940 uh, and 960, 965 is the most likely range here for this system upon landfall. Uh, but the European, again, similar story, shows the same thing. Big time storm surge, big time uh, wind gusts here upon landfall, and then that wind and heavy rain axis move inland. But one reason I did want to show the European is track-wise. Again, very similar timing, but notice the track's a little bit further here towards the west, uh, which brings the center of the storm more over the Atlanta metro than the Greenville-Spartanburg metro. So uh, you folks in the GSP area are thinking, all right, well, that's good. It's further away. Yes, but not really at the same time. Unfortunately, the storm is going to be kind of lopsided here. Uh, with the worst weather kind of in this circled half, uh, kind of in that right side in that northern quadrant of the system. And unfortunately, that puts the entire state of South Carolina in that quadrant and Greenville-Spartanburg in the worst of that quadrant uh, as the storm moves north. Also, you folks into Charlotte, Columbia, uh, we could see big time winds there as well. It's really just going to come down to the exact track. Does this go over Atlanta? Does this go over Greenville-Spartanburg? Does this maybe even go as far over as Columbia and Charlotte? Uh, and, you know, we can't even rule out maybe this even goes over kind of the Georgia Alabama line. So uh, still plenty of sway in the exact track of the system, which is going to bring big time differences uh, in the impacts that we see. 
All right, let's talk about the intensity forecast for this system here really quickly. And I'm gonna kind of breeze on through this a little bit just because I'm saying basically the same things I've said the past multiple videos in a row. Uh, again, ocean water temperatures are through the roof and not just that, how deep these warm ocean temperatures are is also going to be a problem here. So I've been saying it all season, I've been saying the Gulf of Mexico is a ticking time bomb and just waiting for something to take advantage of it. And here's Helene uh, and she's gonna do exactly that and move right over this very warm loop current uh, or this eddy that's a part of the Gulf Stream, really kind of what happens here is you get this warm uh, movement up and then it kind of loops back through the Keys here and then up through the Carolina coastline. Uh, and this is the, you know, exactly right where the storm's gonna move over. Again, it's right through this warmest uh, ocean waters in the Atlantic, which is gonna be more than enough to produce explosive uh, strengthening of the system. All right, another thing I'm watching here is the potential of some uh, dry air that maybe could help us out a little bit. And I don't want to guarantee that it's going to happen because it's not a set in stone thing, but uh, it could help us out potentially here. Uh, and again, this is why it's so important how strong the storm gets in the near term. We move this ahead into time. Uh, and really now through Wednesday, the storm's going to have pretty pristine environment for continuing its uh, strengthening trend, at least in the uh, water temperature realm of things and the moisture content. But on approach to Florida, you will notice some dry air here tries to wrap into the system here on the backside. Uh, and again, if the storm is already very strong and has a well-defined core, this dry air is not going to do a lot to penetrate that. Uh, but if it's a little bit weaker then this dry air really could help us out a lot before eventual landfall. And then that dry air really begins to funnel in after landfall come Friday. Uh, and then uh, that unfortunately could increase our tornado threat here through portions of the Carolinas uh, by the time we get into Friday afternoon. So uh, again, watching multiple types of threats here with this storm system uh, as it moves inland. All right, talking about wind shear a little bit here as well, another ingredient. Currently, again, we're getting a little bit of shear here due to kind of what uh, is Hurricane John over the Pacific right now, throwing a lot of outflow towards Helene, and that's kind of blowing the convection off to the east side of the storm just a little bit. But uh, we do expect that to lighten up a little bit here over the, really throughout today and into tomorrow. Uh, and kind of what happens here in the wind field is this outflow from John actually begins to kind of help Helene a little bit. Uh, and generally speaking, if you look at these streamlines or just kind of the way that the wind barbs are moving, moving out from the center of the storm, fanning out the system, creating more convergence at the surface, deepening the pressure and strengthening the storm. Uh, and that's something that's going to continue for the system for a while here. This gets into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and again, the Thursday morning here, we're still seeing these streamlines kind of separating from the storm. In fact, uh, almost pulling, you know, a lot of divergence out of the system here uh, from a bit of a jet streak over the Tennessee, Alabama and Kentucky corridor there. Uh, that's, uh, that's also going to help to continue to strengthen the storm before eventually, I think, uh, up to landfall, we do see a little bit more wind shear kind of going over the system, which again, it could help to shred it a little bit, uh, but not super off the chart levels of wind shear here by any means, but enough to definitely uh, help cause some problems. All right, uh, so latest track here, let's talk about steering currents just a little bit. Uh, models, again, in a pretty good consensus, this is gonna make landfall into the big bend of Florida. If anything, the current track that you see here, I would shift it east to just a tad here. I think a most likely track would be kind of right up here through the big bend and then probably through northeast Georgia or upstate South Carolina, I think is probably the most likely track currently. But again, uh, either way, you notice we have a consensus. This is gonna make landfall in Florida, move through South Georgia, uh, and then and eventually die out over the Tennessee River Valley. So feeling pretty confident about the track here, which is always something we love to see. All right, uh, I know what you're looking at probably looks a little bit like a mess on your screen right now, but uh, let's talk about uh, kind of some impacts here and time this out a little bit. So this is the latest H-Wharf model, which is a hurricane model, just ran. Uh, and we'll go ahead and time this out. The H-Wharf, again, is one of these models that really develops a storm quickly. And by the time we get to Wednesday uh, morning, I guess here, as this is crossing into the Gulf of Mexico, uh, we have a very strong storm system already approaching major hurricane status. And I've mentioned many times before, because of that, the storm uh, stays quite strong here on approach to Florida. Uh, and the H-Wharf definitely does that, strengthens this well into major hurricane status. And let me back this up a little bit. This is Thursday afternoon, about 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern time. Here's the storm. I mean, this is clocking in at 925 millibars. That would be well into category four hurricane strength. Uh, 
uh, and uh, again, could not completely rule out a Cat 5 out of this, but uh, again, uh, my personal forecast is Category 3 to Category 4, uh, and I think the h wharf kind of aligns with that pretty well here, but by Thursday afternoon, a storm surge is going to be increasing big time here across the Florida West Coast here uh, through the Gulf Coast from, again, kind of Port Charlotte, Fort Myers, up through the Tampa Bay area, expecting big time surge numbers, and the next map we'll look at are those numbers, so again, stay tuned here. Uh, and uh, then we move this ahead into time continues and then we get landfall Thursday evening, probably we'll say five to 6 p.m. that ballpark, give or take three or four hours. Uh, but that's when the worst of, of it will move in. Again, the worst of the storm surge here uh, into the Big Bend of Florida, specifically the Perry, Florida area, back down just south of there towards the Tampa Bay area, likely seeing the worst of it. Uh, and then look what happens. This big shield of rain and wind moves inland through South Georgia. We see big time winds out of this. Again, we could see hurricane force winds well through South Georgia, even up into central Georgia uh, by the time we get into overnight Thursday. And here we go. We're looking at South Carolina and Georgia at this point. Uh, just a massive shield of rain here on the northern side of the system. This is going to drop uh, potentially half a foot of rain. And that's on top of, again, what falls before the storm uh, due to that stalled out frontal boundary. So at this point, we're seeing very gusty, strong tropical storm force winds over much of the state of South Carolina, the state of Georgia. Uh, we pulled this even further ahead. This is about 5 a.m. Friday. Uh, we've just got an absolute mess here uh, through the upstate of South Carolina. I would expect big time school closures. I would expect business closures. Uh, again, I would expect widespread power outages with a kind of setup like this here through the upstate, through Northeast Georgia, through Western North Carolina, probably even into the Charlotte, Columbia area would see big time uh, wind damage from this. And then eventually, uh, we get into Friday afternoon and the storm kind of gets shredded apart here over the mountains and dies out pretty quickly. But I'll mention Friday afternoon, we could look at a tornado threat through portions of Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina uh, during the afternoon hours. But luckily by Friday evening, I really think the worst of the storm will be done for just about everybody. So again, quick hitter, you get um, landfall Thursday evening. By Friday evening, most of us are in the clear. All right, storm surge. Again, I talked about this. We could see catastrophic levels of surge here through the Big Bend. Uh, and unfortunately, I really need to brush up on my, uh, you know, grammar here through some of these Florida towns. But uh, you get you get the idea right here through the Big Bend. Uh, and I'll pull up some community names on my phone here that um, that uh, we can use to call out here. Because again, some of these more Native American names, I uh, unfortunately am not great with. So uh, I'll look into that and I'll study up. But uh, again, the Cedar Key area, we talked about that. I think 10 uh, to 15 feet of storm surge obviously is going to put a lot of people underwater. I would expect mandatory evacuations. Horseshoe Beach, uh, another area, uh, the Steenhatchee area of Florida here, a lot of surge from this system. Uh, and kind of, again, really that corridor, I think, is going to get the worst of it. Uh, but even back down towards Tampa Bay, five to eight feet of storm surge is more than enough to cause problems. Looking at three to five feet back down towards uh, the Fort Myers and Charlotte Harbor area, two to four feet uh, from kind of the southern tip of the Everglades up through Bonita Beach here. Uh, so a lot of folks going to get in on some big time storm surge totals, one that I think unfortunately is going to be remembered for a while here. Uh, I mean, for some of these communities, Helene has the potential to be that storm that when you think about the weather, you think about before Helene and after Helene. Uh, and, you know, you hate to say that, but it's the truth. I mean, if you're getting 15 feet of storm surge, uh, that's that's the kind of things that you can really, uh, you know, just uh, really mess with the community. And uh, uh, unfortunately, not something you want to see at all. All right. Uh, rainfall also going to be a big time concern here. Again, I'm specifically concerned about the folks here, these upslope areas of North Carolina, Western North Carolina, and I-85 corridor North and South Carolina, uh, Table Rock, South Carolina, Traveler's Rest, Pickens, Walhalla, up north here through the mountains, Brevard, through Transylvania County, Henderson uh, County, Hendersonville. Again, this kind of corridor of the base of the mountains. Uh, and again, just to kind of give you a basic science lesson here, what happens is you have this massive mountain here and you get wind that hits it and that wind is forced to rise. Uh, and with all this moisture in the atmosphere, you get that rising motion that's going to condensate uh, into the form of clouds and a lot of rain. Uh, and I think I think places like Table Rock and that uh, kind of corridor of the mountain chain, we could see more than a foot of rainfall. And then obviously that's going to have to flow down the mountain pretty quickly into communities like Pickens, Walhalla, Six Mile. Uh, and again, some of these areas uh, through the Saluda River, again, could see some flooding, would not be surprised at all. So, uh, you know, that's more of an inland threat, the flooding. But even at the coast, we're going to get a lot of uh, rain for sure. But luckily, a relatively quick moving system. So 
Uh, some tropical systems, you know, you get a foot to two feet of rain. This one, I think it's going to be more like half a foot to a foot uh, at the beaches here. Again, storm surge going to be a bigger concern than freshwater flooding through those regions, but then the freshwater flooding will be a concern once we get further inland. All right, tropical storm force wind speed probability. Uh, ignore the numbers here and more ignore or more look at the path rather. Again, kind of right here through the big bend of Florida up through South Georgia and then into South Carolina and the state of Georgia is where we can see the worst of those winds. Uh, and I would expect these numbers to go up through the coming days. But again, just know strong winds well inland. And then obviously at the beach, hurricane force winds uh, are going to be very likely. In fact, major hurricane force winds are a possibility. All right, time it out for you here a little bit more. Uh, again, just to show you another model. Uh, here comes the storm. Here's landfall on the GFS. Again, we kind of already talked about this, so really just going to breeze through this. Uh, again, landfall Thursday evening moves inland during the overnight Thursday. Then we get the worst of those inland impacts uh, and then moves uh, further inland. So again, I already kind of showed that map, but uh, what I haven't shown is the wind gust map. Uh, and this is something that, again, is obviously going to be a big time problem. Thursday afternoon, some of these winds could be gusting up near hurricane strength here. Again, the Tampa Bay area already under hurricane watch up through the Big Bend. So those regions, I would expect at least wind gusts into hurricane strength. But even down towards Fort Myers, uh, we could be gusting near six. 60, 70 miles an hour as the storm moves up the coast. And that's really going to increase that storm surge. Uh, and then obviously we could even see a little bit of wind damage with winds of that magnitude. Here comes landfall though. Again, Thursday evening, the worst of the winds gusting up near uh, or past 100 miles an hour. We could be gusting past 120 miles an hour in places. Again, it really just depends on the exact strength of the system. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, strong winds are expected. Uh, and then look at how this moves inland. I mean, this, these are wind gusts clocking near, near 90 miles an hour into South Georgia. Uh, this would, you know, I don't want to say maybe break some records, but it would be up there for sure. We would get into, you know, top five highest winds ever recorded through some of these communities in and near uh, probably the Valdosta area. And then watch this storm move up uh, the Savannah River Valley. And here we go overnight during the very early morning hours of Friday. Uh, we've got uh, winds still gusting near hurricane strength through Augusta and uh, down near Orangeburg, South Carolina, uh, and through a lot of these kind of smaller communities along the Savannah River. And then by the time we're waking up Friday morning, we've got winds in and around gusting, I should add, again, near 60, 65 miles an hour through the upstate of South Carolina, even the Charlotte Metro gusting up near 50, 55. Same story for Columbia, very strong winds, uh, and then up into Western North Carolina. Potentially even the triad could get in on some gusty tropical storm force winds, probably more like 40, 45 miles an hour by that point, uh, as the storm again deteriorates pretty quickly here. And it's still a gusty afternoon Friday for sure, but not nearly as bad as what we're going to see during the storm. All right, you folks in the Ohio and Tennessee River Valleys, again, I'm sure you're probably wondering too, why do I keep talking about the Southeast? Well, again, you're going to get some rain out of this one from a system already moving through today, but then rain as this system moves through as well. Uh, and you can kind of see that work on through here during the afternoon hours of Friday, but just notice how quickly this storm gets shredded. Once it gets to about Asheville, Greensboro, uh, I mean, this thing gets absolutely wrecked by a ridge that's in place and by that uh, topographical uh, terrain of the Appalachia chain there really helping us out. So, so still a corridor of some heavy rain here on the eastern side, I think through the triad of North Carolina up through southwest Virginia. Uh, but again, the storm kind of dying off pretty quickly by the time we get into Saturday. Uh, and because of that, not expecting much of a wind threat past North Carolina uh, and South Carolina and Georgia. All right, uh, so that took a good uh, 28 minutes or so to talk about. Let's go ahead and discuss a severe weather threat today, and then I'll let you go. Uh, current satellite loop, really the main thing just to note here is we've got a storm system already in place over the Ohio and Tennessee River Valleys, uh, and then another system kind of drooping southward here, and the two are going to combine uh, and uh, form one big kind of system here later on in the week that's going to help steer Helene inland, uh, but we won't get too in-depth on that again. We already talked about kind of the track of the storm, but no, again, there's already a storm system over the country, and because of that, getting widespread rainfall this morning through much of the Carolinas, uh, through Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, up through Michigan. I know we got some viewers there uh, seeing, you know, just a big shield of rain here already well ahead of the system. So a lot of folks getting in on some, uh, you know, probably much needed rainfall for some folks, I will say. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, though, that is going to lead to a severe weather risk this afternoon. So we take a look at the Storm Prediction Center outlook for today. Uh, we do have a slight risk up for portions of Kentucky, kind of into the Pikeville area, into portions of western West Virginia and extreme southern Ohio here. And that does include a tornado threat. 
but note the marginal risk spreads all the way down to Charlotte, Greenville, Spartanburg, uh, Dalton, Georgia there through Huntsville, Nashville, Knoxville, Chattanooga, and even up towards the Indianapolis area. Uh, and back towards central Ohio. So again, a severe weather risk today, uh, as if we didn't already have enough to talk about this week. And then that tornado threat, again, a small threat, but a threat nonetheless today here through, again, the eastern half of Kentucky through much of West Virginia and southern Ohio, having that threat for a couple isolated tornadoes, which we will absolutely want to watch out for. All right, let me time it out for you here, and then uh, we'll look at some rainfall totals, and then I will let you go. So this afternoon, again, we're already seeing rain this morning, but it's these storms that fire up during the afternoon hours that I'm concerned about for severe weather. Again, through southern Indiana, uh, kind of into this circled region on your map is going to be the highest threat of uh, again, a couple tornadoes as well as some strong straight line winds. It can't even roll out a little bit of hail as well. Uh, it's definitely a distinct possibility. Uh, and we move this through. Again, those storms kind of swing on through. Could bring that severe weather threat. But we're also just going to see some good old-fashioned rain through the northeast. And look at the overnight. Uh, some pretty feisty storms screaming on through portions of North Carolina into Virginia. You could see uh, some you know squally weather overnight tonight as that swings on through. And then by the time we're waking up Wednesday, still scattered rain through much of the southeast, mid Atlantic and up into the Northeast, even into Southeastern Canada there. Uh, and then we get to Wednesday afternoon. And this is why I'm concerned about a flooding threat through North Georgia and the Western Carolinas. Uh, look at this. We've already got rain here kind of training almost over some of the same areas. So we could see flooding even before the storm uh, into some of these regions as this front kind of just stalls out into this region. Uh, and we get a lot of moisture kind of hitting it here from that flow from Helene. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of pre, uh, pre-system rainfall. And uh, that continues, and then obviously here comes Helene with just an absolute slug of moisture, almost a fire hose effect here to the north uh, by the time we get into overnight Wednesday and Thursday. So I'll break that down a lot more in depth during the live tonight. Again, come back for that uh, as we go in depth and talk about all this a little bit more. Um, but again, just know this is rainfall. This is not from Helene. This is just from this current frontal system, you know, potentially three to four inches of rain here through the Chattanooga area. North Georgia could see, uh, you know, three inches of rain. And then again, these upslope areas of the upstate, a couple inches of rain as well on top of, you know, half a foot potentially from Helene uh, is going to be more than enough to cause flooding concerns. So uh, that's what we're watching here. That's what I'm concerned about. And that's the latest information we have uh, for you on this Tuesday. All right, folks, again, stay safe out there. If you haven't already subscribed, do so. Come back tonight for the live. I'll be answering all of your questions uh, from wherever you're watching. I'll, uh, I'll answer them. So with that said, have a wonderful and safe rest of your Tuesday, and I'll see you all tonight.